Hello everyone and welcome back to GLB Productions. Bruno Luce here. Thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Yamaha Studio Response Technology System 63 Pickup and Preamp as contained in this Yamaha AC3R acoustic guitar. Now, the System 63 was first released in 2010 and it was only available on three guitars, the Yamaha LJX26C, the APX and CPX1200. And it has since become available in many guitars, including the A series that I have in front of me now. It consists of the SRT pickup, an under saddle piezo pickup system, and the SRT preamp, which is contained in the upper bout of the guitar itself. I'm a bit late to the party with this video, to be honest with you, because the System 63 was recently, at the beginning of this year, replaced with the System 71, which has a much simpler control panel and has only four knobs on it, as opposed to the plethora of knobs, which you will see shortly. However, I've had this guitar for about a year and it's moving on to a new home soon, so I thought I'd go ahead and make this video. So, first of all, the SRT pickup. Now, the SRT pickup is an under saddle piezo style pickup, and unlike a simple ribbon transducer that Yamaha uses on some of their lower end models, this consists of six individual piezo elements, one for each string. And in this sense, it bears a superficial resemblance to the Takamine Palathetic pickup, which was designed and perfected in the late 70s. There is no internal microphone on this particular guitar. All the microphone sounds that you're going to hear are modeled. So now let's have a look at the preamp itself. The preamp is contained in the top bout of the guitar here. And it runs off two AA batteries that are contained in a holder here that pulls out. Uh, one of the advantages of AA batteries is greatly extended battery life over 9 volt systems and also about 11 volts rather than a 9 volt headroom. So hopefully the guitar will sound a bit cleaner when you're playing those big chords. Battery life, according to Yamaha, is about 20 hours on alkaline batteries. It can also accept lithium or rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. So now let's have a look at the control panel. Starting from the top right corner, you can see that you have a volume knob. In practice, I recommend setting this wide open, in other words, fully clockwise. The output of this preamp is somewhat weak, in my opinion, compared to other preamps, uh, both on Yamaha as well as other electroacoustic guitars. And I really feel that to get the best results, you should run it wide open. Next to that, you have a three band EQ. You have a low, a mid and a high knob. In the second row of controls, you have the LCD display for the tuner as well as the automatic feedback reduction indicator. Then you have the SRT section itself. You have a mic type switch, which is used to select the type of microphone modeling that you want. There are three separate types of microphones built in. And then you have a focus wide switch, which is used to select the number of mics as well as their position. Once again, this is all modeled. There is no actual microphone on this guitar. In the third row, you have a tuner switch, which is used to activate the tuner as well as the mute when the guitar is plugged in. You have a switch labeled AFR, which stands for automatic feedback reduction. You have a blend knob, which allows you to blend between the direct pickup signal and the modeled signal. And finally, you have a resonance knob, which adjusts the amount of body resonance available when you are using the modeled microphone settings. So as you can see, there are a huge range of options available. It's a relatively complex preamp 
and I hope to make sense of it for you. So let's move on to the specifics. So first of all, let's look at the basic tone that you would get from just the piezo style pickup. For this, my volume is wide open and the blend knob is set fully counterclockwise to the pickup setting. This bypasses all of the modeling and you get only the sound of the pickup itself. EQ is set flat and the resonance knob is set to 12 o'clock. With that, this is the kind of tone that you get. So as you can see, that sounds like a fairly typical piezo pickup. It's not bad, and I would go so far as to say that it is on par with some of the better electroacoustics that I've heard from companies such as Taylor and Takamine. However, as you can hear, any piezo pickup doesn't sound like a microphone. It sounds like a pickup installed on an acoustic guitar. So now let's bring in the microphone modeling section, which is where the studio response technology really shines. So each guitar within the A series or whichever series is using the SRT modeling has its own microphone models. So for example, when you hear the mic models on this guitar, what you're hearing is this guitar, which has been recorded using the mic models that you are choosing. So it is this model that they have recorded and then used to create the samples. Very much in the same way that on a keyboard you might have a Steinway or a Busendorfer setting and both of these refer to the actual keyboard that was used when they created that particular preset. So there's no shortcuts here and there's no use of generic guitar models. So to begin with, let's discuss the microphones that were used in this modeling process. On the control panel, as you can see, you have three types of microphones available. Type one is a Neumann U67, large diaphragm tube condenser microphone produced from 1960 to 1961. One of the most sought after large diaphragm vintage microphones today uh, of, if you look on the secondary market, they go from anywhere from about $8,000 uh, right up to $15,000. So not something that's available for the average working musician. Type number two is a Neumann KM56, a small diaphragm tube microphone produced from 1955 to 1970. Type three is a Royer R122, a phantom-powered active ribbon microphone that was first introduced in 2002 and is currently in its Mark II iteration. Now, if you look on the Yamaha website, you will see that they make a number of recommendations about what style of music or playing each model of microphone is suited to. But I recommend that you simply use your ears to make that decision. Along with the type switch, we must explain the focus wide switch. Now, they recorded each of these samples two different ways. With the switch in the depressed position, the focus position, you have a single mic position 20 to 30 centimeters away from the guitar. With it in the wide position, this adds a second microphone of the same type positioned, according to Yamaha, a few meters away from the guitar. 
And one of the things that they say is that this setting provides close to the ambient sound that the ear hears when playing the guitar. Whether or not this is true, you'll have to be the judge of that. So now let's demonstrate the three types for you. We will begin with type 1 and we are going to listen to the mic model only. So our blend control is set fully clockwise to the mic position. The uh, resonance and EQ controls are all at their center detent positions and we will begin with the focus uh, wide set to the focus setting. And so there you have the three microphone models. In the roughly one year that I've owned this guitar, I personally prefer the Type 2. And it's worth noting that that is only 
the 100% modeled sound. You have a whole variety of sounds available where you blend that with the onboard pickup sound. So I'll just do a little bit of that for you. So to begin with, this is the straight pickup sound. So as you heard there, you can use that almost like a wet-dry blend on an effects unit. If you need a brighter, more direct sound to cut through, go towards the pickup side. And if you're playing solo or you need a more um, realistic, more acoustic type sound, then go towards the microphone model. Now let's discuss the resonance control. The resonance control, according to Yamaha, they say that it gives you more body tone. Um, I don't really understand what that means because in my book, the sound does all come from the body. So I think it's better to think of it literally as a resonance control. In other words, you turn it clockwise, your sound gets more resonant. Anti-clockwise, you get less resonant. So let's give you a quick demo of that. And the final note about the resonance control is that it's only effective on the microphone models. It does not affect the piezo direct signal. And now let's have a look at the EQ section. You have a three band EQ, bass, middle and treble. Yamaha does not provide any information on what the frequency centers are or how much boost or cut is available. So it's very much a case of using your ears to determine what is the best setting. Um, in practice, I have found that I have very little desire to adjust the EQ. Um, maybe a little bit of mid-range cut, a little bit of bass boost. But it is available and I think it rounds out what is one of the most flexible and versatile preamps available today. The EQ section affects the overall sound. In other words, it's after the blend control and it can be used on the pickup sound, the microphone model, or both blended together.
Now let's demonstrate the AFR or Automatic Feedback Reduction System which is controlled by this button here. When pressed, the system detects the frequency that's feeding back and applies a 12 dB notch filter. So I'll demonstrate that by playing a harmonic. So you can see it says 1 for the first filter. If the same frequency feeds back again, it will deepen the notch to 18 decibels and then again to 24 decibels. That should stop pretty much anything feeding back. Up to five different filters can be applied, after which F will appear on the display. So I'm just going to play that same harmonic up the fingerboard and you'll see the numbers increase. And you'll notice that there it says F for full. It could also be F for something else, as in stop playing with me, but never mind. <laughs> if you want to clear, you hold down the AFR, and it says C for clear. And finally, let's look at the tuner. The tuner is the only part of the preamp that works when the guitar is off, in other words, unplugged. When you press this switch, you can see you have a green dot and two yellow arrows. It's very important to note that this switch latches and there is no auto off. So if you leave this on overnight or between shows, it will happily drain your battery. If you are in tune, it will show you the name of the note and give you just one green dot. If you're flat, it'll be the arrow on the left, and if you're sharp, it'll be the arrow on the right. One thing about this tuner is that it can be calibrated. The reference pitch can be set from 438 Hz to 445 Hz, and the way that this is done is by pressing the AFR button when the tuner is active, and it will display the last digit of the reference pitch. So if I press it now, you'll see it says 0 for 440, 441, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then it drops back to two, uh, 438, 90, and back to 440. This is uh, useful for tuning with instruments that are out of tune and cannot be brought back to reference pitch, for example, an acoustic piano. So that's my overview of the Yamaha Studio Response Technology System 63 Pickup and Preamp. Uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, this system has now been discontinued and replaced with the System 71, but it was in production for a good six or seven years, and as such, there are many thousands of guitars out there with this particular setup. As you can see, it's a very versatile and very good sounding setup and hopefully this video will be helpful to those of you who own it. This has been Bruno Luce with GLB Productions. If you have questions or comments, do please leave them below. And until the next video, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you then.